I'm a student physical therapist and today I'm going to be talking to you guys about body mechanics and why it's so important when treating patients. So what is body mechanics? Body mechanics is the way we position ourselves in order to complete our daily activities. Body mechanics are essential as a clinician because it allows for proper patient care functioning while reducing the risk of injury to ourselves or to our patients. It also plays an important role in ergonomics which is the relationship between man and machine. This is handy when we're working with patients by helping them take into account their body mechanics in order to improve comfort, efficiency, and productivity in the workforce. In fact, there are studies comparing poor body mechanics with good body mechanics, and the results show that good body mechanics has a long-term and short-term impact on well-being and health. So, there are a variety of guidelines for body mechanics, but we are going to focus on five key guidelines. Major key! Okay guys, so the five major keys we're focusing on today is one, maintain a wide base of support, or BOS, two, maintain a normal spinal curvature, three, position yourself close to the load or the patient, four, bend the hips and the knees, and five, avoid twisting at the trunk. Alright, so now let's look at each individual guideline and see how it affects the performance of the physical therapist. A hundred! One hundred one! Okay. Now let's see what happens when the therapist has a narrow base of support. Maintaining the center of mass over a wide base of support allows the therapist to move side to side more efficiently. An abnormal curvature of the back could result in excessive straining of the lower back. So maintaining a slight inward curve of the back helps prevent the excessive straining. The third guideline is to make sure you position yourself close to the patient. It was in this moment she knew she messed up. Cut the tape. Cut the tape. Typically, the therapist remains in close proximity to the patient, which can be beneficial in terms of guarding in the unlikely event of a fall. Notice how in this next clip, the therapist keeps her legs extended and therefore uses her back in order to attempt to lift the patient. Proper position for this is bending at the knees and the hip, which promotes stability as well as initiating the leg muscles to perform the majority of the lifting task. Fifth guideline is to make sure to avoid twisting at the trunk. Just look at the pain the therapist is going through. Bending at the feet or taking several small steps rotates the whole body, which minimizes the stress on the structures of the lower back. Okay guys, so let's review. Maintaining a wide base of support is important because this position allows the clinician to shift their center of mass in an anterior to posterior direction and side to side while remaining over their base of support. For guideline two, you want to try to maintain a normal spinal curvature whenever possible. In particular, maintaining only a slight curve of the spine helps prevent excessive straining on the structures of the lower back. Next, you want to position yourself close to the load. Don't be afraid to move close to your patient. Minimizing the distance between you and the patient reduces the amount of force you must generate to get the job done. Fourth guideline states to bend the hips and the knees. Bending the hips and knees lowers the body's overall center of mass, which promotes stability. This also helps initiate the leg muscles, thus limiting the stress on the lower back. And last, you want to avoid twisting at the trunk, especially when the trunk is flexed. This positioning could cause a back injury. Want to make sure you're pivoting at the feet or taking small steps in order to rotate the whole body fully. Some other things to consider are to plan ahead for a more efficient treatment, push rather than pull when possible, and always know when to ask for a second hand. 